Wow. Um, first, a few um, house cleaning notes. I uh, want to, first of all, thank Tom Shepard for his foresight. Uh, indeed, we will uh, need those 50 passes for 42 players and eight coaches. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I as well uh, would like to say that, uh, Doug, uh, the fact is, is your video highlight didn't uh, show up because even the highlights can't do you justice, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I have oft times said that I'm, uh, I'm American by birth, but I'm Canadian by choice. And um, <laughs> it is unbelievable to me in this instance, though, that I am indeed the, out of 30 million, well over 30 million Canadians, I am, well, the most selfish tonight. Fact is, nothing else I can ask from this game. It owes me nothing. It has given me so much. To be here tonight is absolutely selfish. I want you to understand that I'm not here because of me. It has nothing to do with me. I've often said that I'm nothing more than a turtle on a fence post. You go home this evening, you see a turtle on a fence post, you can be guaranteed of one thing. That turtle didn't get there by itself. <laughs> and so indeed, I have been, been put in this position and, uh, and uh, like many before me, and many don't understand this, but I am a man of faith. It is God who has entrusted me to this position. And he is not concerned with whether I can run a football. He is concerned more with my stewardship over the talents and abilities that he's given me. I want to respectfully thank God for the opportunity to stand before you tonight. And in saying so, I'm going to do my best not to do the exhaustive list Many of you who know me say, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but this game really is about having fun and enjoying. And when I say what, I want you to just say, yeah. What? Yeah. No, this time like you mean it, OK? What? Yeah. Now, now, when I say, yeah, yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> Tonight, I. Uh, have actually, well, I've, I've actually decided to try to give something back to you. I'm going to try to give you a leaflet. I know you got a little book, and uh, but a uh, little leaflet I'm, I'm going to try to give you tonight from, uh, from a little general and a water boy. Hopefully you'll understand that a little bit later. In saying that, quite a few people, there are so many, and I'm gonna try not, I'm just trying to run through some names if I could real fast and, and, and just really thank all, all my friends and family who are here. Thank you so much for being here. The former players that I played with, Paul Mazzotti, Tracy Ham over there, pro. Um, None other than Mr. Damon Allen, Adrian Smith, uh, uh, every, all, all of you. I think I saw Mike Morreale back there. All of you are here in the house. My coach from university, Coach Cox, uh, has come down. And I uh, want to thank so, Coach so much for being here. My coach from the College of William & Mary, my cousin, sit there with the camera. He has always, always supported me, always been there. He's up from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I got so many friends, so many mentors over there, Mario Sherman and Dino and, and uh, my man, Adrian Smith. That's my little brother. I love him, love him like a brother. And uh, uh, Pee Wee, uh, mean the world to me, man. It's great to have you here. Uh, Sam, I, I, I just want to thank all of you, all of my family, my brothers-in-law, uh, just tremendous, tremendous support. They, uh, 
it, it, it is, I, I grew up basically uh, um, as, a, as uh, an only child because my mom didn't mar get married until I was 14. And so my 15, my, my, my daughter is, uh, or my, sorry, my, my sister Kelly is 15 years uh, younger than me. My sister Alva is here for the first time. I want to let those two ladies know that you inspire me. Two of them are both single guys, nice guys in the room. <laughs> they are both young professionals. They both own their own homes. <laughs> and when we say that, that is not about prospect, and it's a pride in young women who have become professionals, and they've done it on their own, being single, right? And they are professionals, and they own their own home, and that's uh, a pretty remarkable thing. So, sis, and sis, I want to say that you inspire me. Thank you so much. <laughs> so many players, so many coaches, and, and uh, I, um, I, if, if I could, just a few guys who are not here tonight. Uh, Bob Obilovich gave me the name Pinball. He was the first guy that gave me the chance. Don Matthews gave me the first chance to be a running back, and my fellow alumnus from William & Mary, a uh, man who's very familiar to uh, Hamilton here, Ralph Sazio was the guy who first uh, brought me in and, and uh, gave me an opportunity. Would you give him a hand for me tonight, please? <laughs> And Lori and the fan club, the, the fa you, 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 just, you just have an indomitable spirit. You're always there, always supporting. Love you for that and, and uh, just really special. And, and I, I, uh, I would like to maybe just, just spend a, a moment or two on, on a few family members, though. And, and uh, I'd like to start with my mom. My mom, uh, well, David asked me a question yesterday. And, and he asked me to be selfish for a little while and, and talk about my career. And in doing so, um, it made me think about my mom, and she was really the one that challenged me to be on this stage. You see, I wanted my mom to understand that she was great. As a single parent, I wanted her to understand that she wasn't just enough, she was more than enough. And in that, when I went to school, I wanted to be the best student. I wanted to be that for her because I wanted to reflect on her because she was the best mom I knew. I started playing football when I was eight years old, right? They told me I was going to be too small. She took me to every, every practice, five days a week. We played games on Saturday. I can't remember a time where there was someone else who took me to practice. Can, can you imagine this? This, this for, for, for from eight years old to the time I graduated high school, I don't ever, I, I don't ever remember getting a ride home from anyone else. And she was a single parent for most most of that time. Absolutely remarkable. And what I did, whether I played football, whether it was being in school, I tried to represent the contribution that I thought she had made. I wanted to represent her. In saying that, my mom inspired me to be great. My mom demanded the most of me. And in everything I did, when I meet somebody, I want them to know that Ann Bryan raised me. When I interface with someone, every time I meet someone, every time I interact, whether they know me or not, I'm signing an autograph. And the footnote to that autograph is Ann Bryant's son. When they leave my presence, I want them to know that Ann Bryant is great. I also have to say that I got great uh, Great DNA from my dad. Yeah. He was a football junkie, sports junkie in general, and I didn't grow with him. He grew up about an hour away from me, and uh, my sister Alva um, grew up in the house with uh, my dad, and, and uh, he, was, uh, he was a father, and uh, not only a father, but when he died, the coach got up and said, uh, you know, I, I had the, you know, when I first met Coach uh, Clemens, uh, 
uh, bruh is what they called him many times, a little doc. And, and so uh, L- little doc was called little doc because he was a therapist. He did all the taping on the team. He was a coach. Not only was he a coach, but, well, he went on to talk about this guy who fell asleep on football. You're like, how can anybody fall asleep on football? We're watching film, getting ready to, and this guy's falling asleep. He said, I found out later on, well, not only that he was a football coach, but, but he also, well, ran the school yearbook, that he was also president of the Sickle Cell Foundation, that he also, well, ran the local youth center. He also was the president of the Sickle Cell chapter. He had all of these different jobs. My dad graduated with a degree in mathematics, and, and uh, well, even though I didn't grow up with him, he gave me great DNA. And when he died four years ago, he had just come up to his first game back in 2003. Never saw me play, but he did see me coach. Came the first week, and we won. We went on to the Eastern Final. We played in Montreal, and maybe a little bit of a controversial call maybe kept us uh, from getting to the final, but again, uh, I still believe they deserved that call. They were the best team all year. They had home field advantage, and so the home team's supposed to get that call, but in saying that, my dad thoroughly enjoyed himself, and, and so he was going to come back to training camp with me next year, and, and being such a big football fan, you'd think he'd be there before, but he had stuff to do, and the people who were with me kn- know that that's kind of what I am. I got stuff to do. I'm always busy, always doing something, and, and he gave me great DNA, um, but... Um, I can say this, if I can move on, that, that um, while my mom inspired me to be great in everything I did and my dad gave me great DNA, I might also say that when he died, he, the article read that Bradenton loses, Bradenton, Florida, that is, loses a local hero. And uh, that's the DNA he gave me. That DNA went on to make three little girls. My little girls, you need to know that you are my world. You are my precious little pearls. But I shouldn't just equate you with something ornate. Indeed, along with your mom, you are my soulmates. You need to know, girls, that I prefer you over oxygen. Rachel, Raven, and Riley. (laughs) Rachel, Raven, and Riley, I would die for you. You are amazing. And to my bride, (laughs) my beautiful songbird, sweet, and sublime, not like a watch. You literally are time. My heart beats to serve you. I am hardwired to love you. You complete me. Diane, my wife, You are literally my life. I want to say today that my challenge here is to leave you with something. I mentioned I wanted to to leave you just a little bit of a, a leaflet. That leaflet is Leaf Patterson. From the little general course, you know that's Lon Lancaster. And the water boy is Bobby Ackles. Three great Canadian football league champions. I know the light has grown long, so I'm going to try to expedite this and, and really say that my great pleasure this weekend going in with this class is just that. (laughs) They are class. They are absolutely that. I told my guys when I was coaching one time during ancient times, when two teams went in the battle, the winning team would get a chance to go home. Yeah, what happened to the losing team? Yeah, beheaded. (laughs) 
stoned to death. I, said, I looked him in the face. I said, now, guys, given that information going into tonight's game, how would that change the way you played the game? <laughs> well, the truth is, when we really get it, it wouldn't change it a bit. The truth is, if it cost me my life, I wouldn't change a thing that I'm doing. Tom Shepard, that's what I see in you. You represent the passion of an entire province. Tom Shepard, you're what Canadian football is all about. John Bonk, I talked to your wife and she told me that she often refers to you as her, well, girlfriend. <laughs> now, uh, It, maybe let me explain. It has nothing to do with anything dealing with uh, anything that may have been brought from any lingerie store or anything of that sort. The, the reality is, is, is she says that there's a sensitivity about you that is indescribable. My, my brother-in-law, Willie, saw you on Thursday, and he said there's something different about that guy. There's an aura around him. You are a perfect gentlemen. <laughs> Mike Pringle, you played the game that I wanted, the way, that get, way I wanted to play the game, man. You, you played it the way that I wanted to play. Man, look, I tried to jump around and get out of the way of guys, but you know, you're really deep inside. There was something in me that just wanted to challenge people. That's why I was always trying to jump around and, and get through guys. But what I really wanted to do is do what you did. It's to face them up. Boom! Right there. Right in front of them. Oh! And, yeah, and you, you understand what I'm saying, right? <laughs> look, nothing... Michael, nothing gave me more pride than I have a guy that was 300 pounds. Boom, give me all that. Yeah, yeah, just, just knock the, yeah, yeah, scatter my categories, right? I mean, hit me with everything, and, and, and I'm falling. I got pieces everywhere. But then I just stand up, right, and pat him on the butt and say, hey, nice job. <laughs> but you did more than that. You hit him in the face and told him, nice try. <laughs> huh? That's the way I wanted to play. Yeah. Mike Pringle looked in the face of a defensive player, and he said, I defy you to try and tackle me. That's the way I wanted to play the game. Doug Flutie. You didn't, uh, you didn't tell everybody the whole truth, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, you, you see, he, he told us that, well, that, yeah, you know, he played a baseball game, and, and they won the game. It was a playoff game. Yeah, they're, they're in the playoffs right now. They got three games left. They're the championships. They delivered him. Now, now, so, so, so this game that they won the other night sort of delivered them into the championship part of the, the rounds here. So, so it, it was a playoff game. It was the, the second to last round. They were the semifinal round. So the game they won delivered them into the championship game. What he did not tell you is, is that, well, he didn't make it here on Thursday because he had to play in that game, and the fact is he pitched that game and he pitched against well a former major league pitcher that happened to be well 11 years younger than him and well he pitched all nine innings and he pitched a nine inning shutout and won the game three nothing <laughs> my man highlights do no justice in fact, uh, he, he, he failed to tell you that, well, he's stolen 26 bases in this league this year, and the guy that's in second place has stolen eight. 
three times better than the closest competitor. You see, the, the, when you talk about a guy, com, just love the game. Listen, this is what the game is all about. It really is about, it's about enjoying. It's about going out every time and laying a what? Oh, man. The only one we got there is little Mike Pringo. He is ready to play. Listen, he says, I defy you to beat me. Yeah. Here, what? Yeah. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Um, my leaflet to you tonight from the little general and the water boy is this. Be like Dougie. Embrace life. It's too short. You know what I'm proudest about this group. I talked about this group. I talk about the passion of a province, a, a perfect gentleman, right? I got, I, about the way I wanted to play the game. And I talked about well, how we should all play the game. But the reality is, is what makes me proudest about these gentlemen this week that I am standing on this podium with is this. Tom and his bride have been together for 44 years. John and his bride have been together for 34 years. Michael and his bride have been together for 10 years. Diane and I, together for 24 years, married for 16. Dougie, he's told you, he and Laurie have been together since they were 15 years old. You know the three guys I talked about? Leaf, he left three girls, all happy, all amazing. Two were his children. One was his wife, dedicated to them. Bobby Ackles, we know the legend, how he and his bride enjoyed sailing. And when he said anchor, it was a life well lived. And Ronnie Lancaster, we know Ron, he was the teacher. Not just a great leader, he was a teacher. Not only was he a great husband, he was a great father and it is represented in the success of his three children. And one of his greatest prides is his grandchild who's taking after Ronnie. That's my package to you. I'd, uh, I thought I was gonna write something down for the Hall of Fame. I, I don't generally write anything down. I say, Hall of Fame, you gotta write something down, Mike. It's simple tonight, I just came to give you a message. When I said what, I wanted you to say yeah like you knew how to live life. I wanted you to say yeah <laughs> like you understood why Doug steals 26 bases <laughs> and the next guy only steals eight. What? Yeah. My challenge is to get you to live this life. There's a saying that everybody dies but not everyone lives. My challenge to you tonight is to live and to understand what living means. It starts with family. That's what it's all about. It is friends, it is relationships. <laughs> As a loyal, uh, Canadian Football League fan, I am in love with this league. To this great country and this great game, it is you who is in my Hall of Fame. And this little guy, for one, will never be the same. With that, I implore you. Right now, as the Argonauts, we're going through a little bit of a difficult time. Howard and David are my Goliath, though. They brought this club back. And as the Argonauts, we were originally a rowing club. 
the oldest pro football team in the universe, 135 years old. First began as a rowing club, and we wear the, the double blue because the double blue represents Cambridge and Oxford, great rowing traditions at those universities. The double blue colors come from that. Indeed, the only time we didn't take the field other than the war years were a couple of years in the 1890s. See, we were rowers and we played rugby during the off season to stay in shape. And at that time, the rugby's had pulled muscles in their stomachs. So in the 1890s, we had a couple of years that we couldn't take the field. Other than that, we have taken it proudly. And in that rowing tradition, I'm reminded of a story that I'll close with. There was a nation, a small nation, who was constantly bombarded by this much larger nation. They decided to try to fight back. And what they did is they got on their boats and they paddled much in the tradition of rowers. And in doing so, they went over and they tried to create a little bit of collateral damage. And then they'd get in their boats and they'd retreat and they'd come back home. Well, it had actually been decades and they had made very little dent in doing anything and well whenever this larger nation wanted they came over and took all of their head well they had a captain that went over and he says guys it's time to go back he says let's get together as many as we can they numbered 600 they had been chased off before as they took the shore he gave the command they all raised their artillery and they started to charge. He yelled, whoa! With that, they all stopped. He said, gentlemen, about face. They thought they were going back already. Indeed, they were. As they headed to the boats, the words he said was, burn the boats. They said, what? Burn the boats. What? Burn the boats. Yes, burn the boat. The whole group, all 600 men eventually said, burn the boats. Burn the boats. Burn the boats. See, they had created a situation where there was no turning back. Now, they were committed. Yeah, they burned the boats, they turned around, they charged, they overtook the nation and enjoyed peace for centuries. That's what I'm going to ask you to do tonight, my leaflet to you, from the little general and the water boy, is to burn the boats. What do I mean by that? I want you to commit yourself. Don't turn back. Commit yourself to be Hall of Famers in life. Some of you got nice jobs. Not concerned about that. You need to understand that life is not about stuff. It is about people. Some of you feel a little bit good about what you've been able to achieve in life, right? I want you to understand that true greatness in life, life's hall of fame is about your relationships. Is it a not, not about your money? All the money that you got. You think you can live independently? How many of you, right, built the car that you drove here in? You think you can do it by yourself? H how many of you paved the road that you drove here on? O or grew the food that, that fed you today? Maybe prepared the food. that you, we, Listen, as, as people, we are no good alone. No good alone. Our only greatness is in serving each other. My challenge to you is not to be complacent. I don't care where you are in, in life, how young you are, how old you are. are, you, are, are. I, I want to challenge you tonight to live, to make the choice to live like Dougie. Make that choice. Burn the boats. I don't care what it is in your life, burn the boat. Make the commitment to be great in your family. 
I want to challenge you to be a Hall of Fame dad, a Hall of Fame husband, a Hall of Fame mom, a Hall of Fame wife, a Hall of Fame brother, a Hall of Fame sister, a Hall of Fame community member. That is what I implore you to do, to embrace life, to live life. Ladies, gentlemen, burn the boats. No turning back. Choose life. Can I ask all of you, can I ask all of you to stand? But this time when you stand, I don't want you to clap for some little five foot, foot five guy who all, all he did was know how to run with a piece of leather, right? What I want you to do is this. I want you to clap to say, Mike, I'm choosing to live life, to burn my boat, and to live a life that is representative of being in the hall of fame of life. Give a hand clap. Have some enthusiasm. Clap for these guys up here. Thank you very much.